Hi, I'm Tony, and today we're covering Sports Bike Shop's top five sports helmets. These are what I think of as the classic full face helmet. There's not a sun visor in sight, and you won't find a micrometric buckle for any of the straps either. You'll find lids like those in our videos on sports touring helmets, which you can watch by following the link that should be popping up on the screen now. The helmets in this video are for people who don't mind swapping visors to suit the light conditions, or don't mind taking a few seconds longer doing up their helmet before a ride. These helmets are all approved to the latest safety standard for the road, ECE 2206. They also all have the ACU Gold sticker that you'll need if you want to go on a track day or go racing. We've chosen these five helmets based on a mixture of customer feedback and also our own thoughts when wearing these helmets for our in-house review videos. Where we have a full review of any of these helmets, there's a link in the description below. And you'll also find more info there on things like sizing, prices, safety approvals, and whether glasses will fit comfortably. Okay, let's get on with the helmets. It was an easy choice to put the Shoei NXR2 in this video with a heap of positive feedback from customers in the three years since this helmet was launched. This was one of the very first helmets to meet the new ECE 2206 safety standard and it's built on the popularity of the original Shoei NXR. The first 120 customer reviews leave the NXR2 sat on an average customer rating of 4.9. There are some common complaints from those reviews. Relocating the visor lifting tab from the left to the center has been unpopular with some, but others are big fans of this center tab, and I'm one of those who prefers this in the middle. The other criticism of this helmet is difficulty fitting an intercom control module to the left-hand side of the shell just here. Shall we have a center unit specifically for this helmet, but fitting universal comms can be tricky. We weighed a size medium NXR2 at 1,423 grams, which is light, and we found the new venting setup and peripheral vision to be excellent. Pricing runs from £400 up to £500. For more info on prices, sizing, approvals, and more like that, check out the description below. Arai owners are often the most enthusiastic about their helmets, and this Arai Quantic follows that trend exactly. A read through the reviews from customers shows riders who are mostly blown away by the quality and the comfort of their helmets. A few within those reviews find the visor latch fiddly. Personally, I think they're right and some want a longer chin curtain for more protection against drafts. But critics are mostly drowned out by a wave of positivity. 66 of the first 69 reviews for this helmet came with a five-star rating, which gives the Quantic a meaty 4.9 average. Arai's construction methods mean this helmet is on the heavy side. We weighed a medium Quantic at 1,560 grams, but not one owner complains about weight in the reviews. The weight comes from a stiff shell, which allows a softer EPS inside the helmet, and that's the key to Arai's protection first philosophy. I think that also contributes to the highly regarded comfort as a soft EPS molds more easily around your head. At a price ranging from £500 to £600, the Quantic isn't cheap, but the people who've bought one of these almost exclusively love their helmet. As with the other lids here, you'll find more info on prices, sizing, and approvals in the description below. The AGV K6S is the lightest of the five helmets here, and AGV claim it's the lightest full-face road helmet on the market, full stop. We weighed this size medium K6S at just 1,256 grams, and I can't think of a rival with a realistic claim to be lighter than that. It's rare for manufacturers to shout about sensitive subjects like impact protection, but AGV happily give hard numbers for how this helmet outperforms the ECE 2206 safety tests. With an average rating of 4.9 from the first eight customer reviewers, it's also made a good start to match the original K6, which rated at 4.8 from the first 59 reviews. Sizing comes through as the main issue in those customer reviews, with many saying they had to go up a size. I suspect that's down to the helmet's compact nature, as this is not a roomy helmet on the inside. But the lining has a smooth feel, the visor is great for peripheral vision and security of mounting, and ventilation is good as well. If you can get the right fit, then the K6S is a brilliant sports helmet. Prices range from £380 up to £460, and there's more info on that, as well as things like sizing and approvals, in the description below. The Scorpion XO R1 Evo Carbon Air has great heritage, following on from the very popular XO R1 Carbon Air. The 30 customers who reviewed that original all gave five stars, which is a great record. And this is essentially the same helmet, but with the extra reassurance that comes from approval to the latest ECE 2206 safety standard. The carbon fiber shell catches the eye, and it also contributes to a 1,375 gram weight for this size medium on our scales. Of the lids in this video, only the Uberlite AGV K6S is lighter than this one. You get two visors, one clear, one tinted, a top spec pinlock anti-mist insert, and very effective chin and top vents. 
initial customer feedback for this Evo version is not far off the perfection achieved by its predecessor. After the first seven reviews, this one sits on a 4.9 average rating. The only drop star amongst those reviews was down to noise, but things like that are always subjective and other owners find their XOR1 Evo to be quiet. Prices start at £380 and go up to £400. For more detail on prices, sizing, approvals and more info like that, check out the description below. HJC's R for 12 is new for 2024 and it takes over from the very popular R for 11 as their sporty road helmet. The old R for 11 had an impressive average rating of 4.9 from 239 customer reviews. And I'd say this is a generally a better helmet than the one it replaces. The shell is made from HJC's PIM Evo composite fibers, which has a wider variety of fibers than that older R for 11. Uh, measured 1,514 grams, it's about 100 grams heavier than the previous lid, but I think that extra weight will bring you some extra safety. The R411 scored three stars in the UK government's sharp safety tests, and everything so far suggests an ECE 2206 helmet like this will score at least four stars in sharp. Now, I found ventilation to be very good with this helmet, as was peripheral vision, and the pin lock insert is top spec as well. Now, a big change for this helmet is that the visor lifting tab, which is now on the left rather than in the middle where it was on the R411, this one's less likely to break than the one on the previous helmet, but I think it's also fiddlier to use. Prices for the R for 12 start at £400 and go up to £460. We've put more detail on prices, sizing, approvals and things like that in the description below. When I first started riding bikes, virtually all helmets were like this, fixed full face lids with a D-ring strap and just the one visor. Back then, Britain was dominated by sports bikes, but since then, the flip front helmet has got a much, much bigger foothold and the internal sun visor has also become more and more popular over those years. But there's still a place for sports helmets. They give a reassuring, very enclosing feeling of protection. And I also think a D-ring strap gives more precision than a clicker cam, though obviously it does take a little bit longer to fasten the helmet that way. The absence of a sun visor also means less flexibility on the go, but I think you'll always get better clarity of vision when looking through one visor rather than looking through two. If you're using a tinted visor, especially a heavily tinted race visor that's probably not road legal, then I'd suggest keeping a clear visor with you as well. If you do get caught out past daylight hours, then it will come in really useful. And in the very unlikely event you get pulled over by the police for wearing a tinted visor, producing a clear one from your bag will at least show you're using that tinted visor responsibly. I think all of the lids here are great options, but my advice is always the same on lids. Go for the one that fits you the best. The best helmet in the world can instantly feel like the worst helmet in the world if it doesn't suit your head properly. So please don't be so attached to the idea of one particular model that you exclude all the others. Now I hope this guide gets you started, but I would suggest spending time trying on some lids to make sure that you get the one that's right for you. Thanks for watching.